So I'm up here to talk about how and why retail organizations are now embedding AI into their DNA culture. Now, before I get onto the how, let's just kind of reflect on the why. Why would retail organizations consider AI as part of their decision-making uh, inside their business? So I think it's almost unavoidable today to not see the amount of publications, articles, research that is constantly reported on about the value that AI is going to bring organizations that invest in this type of technology. The two data points on here should be enough to actually engage everybody in this room the type of value and productivity that AI can address inside retail organizations. The second point is some of the most entrepreneurial billionaires on the planet are also taking time out to talk about the impact that AI can have on your organization positively or negatively. As Elon Musk talks about, companies have to race to build AI or they will be made uncompetitive. And if your competitor in the room today is building AI and you're not, the indication is in the future they will crush you. Hard statements coming from pretty successful people that are looking at AI in this space. It is without doubt we have arrived at what's deemed the fourth revolution, which is called intelligence. Every single person in this room, every single company, every single country is going to be disrupted by AI over the next three to five years. I think the closest we can get to in terms of a comparison is the third revolution when the digital native companies like Facebook, and Google and Amazon disrupted the traditional blue chip companies that were operating outside of that digital space. But without doubt, the impact that AI is going to have on all of us and our daily lives is compa uncomparable compared to the rest of the previous revolutions. And I think if you say, if you work in an organization and you say in three years' time, my company is using AI, it will be like saying my company uses software. It's going to be that adopted inside organizations. Now, what typically happens when you get a, trans a technology transformation that changes the way that you operate your business, what's happened in the past is you, the first movers, the first companies that move towards this get an uplift. A typical first mover advantage can be anything up to about 40%. Those companies that follow, they get about a 10% uplift. And then there's companies that literally don't do it, and their companies start to get challenged. The difference with AI, and the reason why it has such a significant uplift, is that any project you take on using AI has a very measurable way to understand the impact. If I work on a project, that's about customer churn? Will my customers churn away from my business? Can I predict the absolute amount of quantity I need to serve my customers' demand? It's very, very measurable when it comes to adopting AI. But I don't expect everybody in the room to be very familiar with AI and machine learning, so I just want to sort of pause for a second and just call out the definition of AI. AI is systems able to perform tasks that ordinarily require human intelligence. That's the definition of AI. Now, it comes to machine learning. The machine learns from the past to build a model to predict what's going to happen in the future. This is what we're talking about today when we talk about AI and machine learning. Machine learning has been around since 1959, ladies and gentlemen. That's just over 60 years. 
So it's not exactly something new. So why hasn't it been widely adopted in the past? Here are three very uh, disturbing stats to give you an indication of that. The first one is, for any data scientist out there that is building a model and is manually coding hundreds and thousands of lines of code to build a model, 96 times out of 100, there's going to be some problems with building that model. The second problem is, once the model is built, and the person wants to deploy that model into their organization to change a different outcome, 90% of the time, IT organizations struggle with getting that model into production. But the most terrifying data point on here is once a company has built a model and deployed a model, only 1% of companies from our research actually monitor whether that model is still performing once it's deployed. I have experiences of companies like the companies in this room that have put a model in deployment and hasn't checked for three to six months whether the model is still performing to how it should be when it was first deployed. And we all know that life changes, competition changes, economics changes, weather changes, and these are impacts that can have on a model unless you basically monitor the performance of those. The other bottleneck as to why there hasn't been a wide-scale adoption of AI and machine learning inside organizations is, and I'm going to attempt audience participation at this point. So please join in, if. Is there anybody in the room, put your hand up, that is a data scientist today working inside your organizations? Hands up if there's any data scientist in this room. Now. I don't have the best eyesight, but I don't think a hand went up. So there's not a data scientist in this room. Now, the problem is, is that trying to find data scientists with this types of skill sets to come and work in your organization to basically transform your business to be AI driven, you've got to find a data scientist in the first instance, and we can't find one in this room today. Secondly, they've got to have those 12 types of skills. Thirdly, you've got to attract them to come and work for you. Fourth, you've got, to you've got to inspire them to want to work with you. And fifth, you've got to retain them. Challenges, real challenges for organizations today. So what about if we could remove that bottleneck by just concentrating on two of those 12 prerequisites, which should be everybody in this room. The top two, you understand your business better than anyone. And in your area of the business, you understand the data that actually is operating in your side of the business. Now, if we could just focus on those two prerequisites, then we have a chance to basically transition your business to be AI and machine learning. Now, I work for DataRober. I'm the general manager for retail. The company was formed eight years ago, and if you've ever heard of the term automated machine learning, Data Robot were the pioneers that termed that phrase that is now a very common phrase around the AI space. We were the first company that allowed you to automate a lot of those pre-manual processes that was causing 96% of the time problems with developing the model and 90% of the time of deploying those models, and that scary number of 1%, Data Robot was, was formed to automate a lot of those manual processing tasks. So what does that mean? That suddenly means, as we don't have a data scientist in this room, then there's still an opportunity for companies to start to be AI-driven, to start using machine learning to predict outcomes, because you can scale through automation, which means you can be more productive with the data scientists you have. But more importantly, to the room that I'm speaking to today, those people in the audience that are data analysts, business analysts, or data savvy people, people that work with data day in, day out, through the automation of the machine learning platform, we can skill those people to actually start building models themselves to be called AI producers or AI creators. But this is what we're seeing from organizations that are using us today. 
Too many data points on this slide. I'm going to pick out two. One is, because we can automate the building of machine learning models, in the time that we've been operating as a company with the hundreds of customers that we have today, we've built over a billion models to actually predict outcomes of your business. And the second one is, it's very important that you focus on the highest impact you can have on your organization. And so the $10 billion number there is what our customers have told us that they've saved in terms of deploying machine learning inside their business. So what are we doing in retail? Very simply, I would say every single machine learning model and project that we are working that's the music, isn't it? That we are working on today is around customer, supply chain, and operations. I have two use cases. One is Kroger, the, large, the fifth largest retailer in the world that's deploying a billion personalized coupons to their customers every year based on building models to predict the likelihood that they would redeem those coupons. Secondly, Carrefour. Does everybody know who Carrefour is? And I'm joking. Thank you very much. Just seeing you're still awake. Carrefour is using DataRobot today to predict where they should put a new store inside their store locations. Where is the best place to put a store? Carrefour are using machine learning models to predict the revenue you would get from those machine learning models. So, thank you for quieting down the music. Lots of use cases. I'm going to walk away from this man so he can't get me. <laughs> These are the customers that are using DataRobot today. Thank you for your time. We've got a booth upstairs. I'll see you later. <laughs>